Well, hello everybody. Uh, got another one I want to deal with uh, on the uh, things that's missing in some modern Bibles and the word hell. It's missing. They'll use the word Sheol in the Old Testament and Hades in the New Testament. In other words, <clears throat> they will not translate the word. They're afraid to translate the word. There's a reason for that. Uh, that word Hades just means the place of uh, the, the underworld. Uh, and there is a Greek god who was over the underworld. His name was Hades also. Uh, and it don't necessarily, it just means where everybody goes when they die. Uh, it can be translated the grave. King James translates it the grave one time because of the context. But uh, it also meant that some were tormented there when the Bible's talking about it. And this goes back to what I was talking about, about uh, getting your definitions from Greek lexicons and Greek dictionaries. They all go back to Greek mythology and what their definition was. I don't want to know what Greek mythology had to say about Hades. I want to know what the Bible was talking about. Well, the verse that I have in mind here is, uh, and this really bothered me when I saw it in several of them, nearly all the modern versions. <clears throat> I looked at the NIV, I looked at the ESV, and I looked at the Holman Christian Standard Bible. The main ones I looked at, but I looked at all of RSV. From the RSV on down, they're pretty much the same. Uh, they will say that uh, in Hades he lifted up his eyes this says my King James Bible says and in hell he lift up his eyes being in torments seeth Abraham before off Lazarus in his bosom so what does that mean well, let me give you what the Bible says. The first mention, I'm going to deal with that next in our study on how to study the Bible. But our first mention of the word hell is Deuteronomy 32, 22. And it says this. When I get to it, I will read it. 32, 22 says, For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn under the lowest hell. There's a fire in his anger. Hell is a place of torment. Hell is a place of fire. Uh, okay, the first mention in the New Testament. And it's funny, most of these Bibles are translated right the first time in the New Testament. Uh, was in the New Testament Jesus is the first person to mention it and they're, I guess they're just a little more afraid to change Jesus words uh, the first time he says something so I don't know but Matthew chapter number 5 uh, the Bible says uh, in verse 22 but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Whosoever shall be, uh, whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. It's funny them, uh, King James uses two words, hell fire. Modern Bibles use one word and make hell fire one word understood that one yet but if it's right in one place it's right all the way through uh, they don't translate it why do they not translate it 
Well, I look back into church history, and I look back into where our modern modern Bibles come from. The whole idea, the whole text comes from Alexandria, Egypt, as I've told you before. Origin was over the school in Alexandria, Egypt. Origin had some weird, weird beliefs. Origin did not believe in torment, the torment of hell. He did not believe in the hellfire. Why would you be a Christian? Not believe in it. I read early Christian after early Christian after early Christian and what they had to say about hell, and they all believed it. These so called church fathers, and even some uh, of the lesser known, they all believed in it. The Bible teaches it. Why would you change it? It's because there is a conspiracy. Satan is behind it. He don't want you to think of it as hell. It's just a place where you go when you die. It's not a big deal. You know, of course, the Catholic came up with purgatory. Well, they didn't come up with it. A philosopher came up with it, and they barred it. Uh, and listen, my Bible says there is a literal place called hell with literal fire literal fire and people go there Jesus said called it hell fire they're in danger of hell fire even if you want to say Hades fire hey you're going if you're not saved by the grace of God and it's eternal uh, Luke 16 is one of the most hated portions of scripture because it lays it out plain. Lazarus went to paradise. The uh, rich man went to hell where there's fire and there's torment. And guess what? He's still burning. That's a sad, sad thing to think of. But he is still burning. Do you want a Bible? that takes away the doctrines that Christianity has believed all through the centuries? Or do you want to have a Bible that's taking away the deity of Christ? We done mentioned that. Uh, I mean, salvation, the doctrines of salvation, and the doctrine of hell. If that's what you want, Use your modern Bible. But you're being duped. You're being uh, tricked. There's a conspiracy going on to water down what you believe. Put question marks around what you have been taught, of what Christianity's taught for centuries, what this Bible has said for centuries. I'm telling you, friend. We're living in a day where they tamper. Uh, by the way, I said origin. Don't believe, didn't believe in hell. Well, when did the modern Bible start coming along? It was two men started all that. Names of Westcott and Hort. Go look them up, study them out. They're the ones behind the Greek texts that all the modern Bibles come from. Westcott and Hort. They were on the committee came up with that text and the RV, the revised version and all that so which one and, and listen, they didn't believe in the torments of hell they believed in necromancy, you go and speak to the dead some witchcraft junk they, they believed in so many different things it was not biblical Christianity but yet all of our Bibles all of our modern Bibles have some of that in it even the New King James has some of their readings in it. Why would you want one like that? I don't. And I'm not going to. I'm going to believe the Bible I have by faith that God preserved His Word. Not watered down. Not Satan saying, Yea, hath God said? No. I don't want question marks around my Bible. I want the true living Word of God. 
Jesus said, My words shall never pass away. The words of the Lord are pure words, the Bible says. I want the pure words. And it really upsets me, makes me mad, when they mess with the Bible. But uh, I hope y'all get upset about it. And if you're using some of the others, listen, I hope you take this into consideration. You go to studying it. You go look it up on the internet. Ain't nobody believes in hell. Ain't nobody believes in hell fire except Bible-believing Christians. Just look it up. So, oh, they'll, they'll give you all kinds of things about Hades and why it's not hellfire. My Bible says it's hell fire. A fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell. Jesus said you... They're in danger of hell fire. He said that rich man, lift up his eyes in hell, being in torments. Jesus said, and uh, the Bible says in, in the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. I'm just going to believe the Bible. If you're watching, never been saved it's where you're headed it's where you're headed you need to know that you know that you know that you've been born again if you've not it's where you're headed either in eternity in heaven if you're saved or it's an eternity in hell if you're not do I like it I don't, I don't like having to say that Friend, but if you do not know Jesus as your Savior, that is the place you're going. Listen. Pay attention. Get you a King James Bible and read it. Believe it. It's telling you the truth. There is a war on for your soul, and the devil, in the 1800s, he quit trying to just destroy Christianity. He couldn't do anything about it after that great revival of the Great Awakening. He just couldn't destroy it by persecution anymore. So what did he do? He started watering it down. Destroying it from the inside out. That's what he's doing in this Laodicean church day where Jesus said it's lukewarm. It's neither You're neither cold nor hot. He said it makes me sick. God help us. Lord, I pray that you touch and have your way and use this video in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, people.